each and every one of us will have a special portion to partake as you speak. We will listen and hear and understand and have a divine encounter with you today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have faith in God. We continue our message on I will not leave you comfortless. Have faith in God when your pathway is lonely. He sees and knows all the way you have trod. Never alone at the least of his children. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. You can sing along. Have faith in God when your prayers are not answered. Your honest be we never forget. Wait on the Lord. Trust his word and be patient. Have faith in God. He will answer yet. I'll go to verse 3. Have faith in God in your pain and your sorrow. His heart is touched with your grief and despair. Cast on your cares and your burdens upon him and leave them there. Oh, leave them there. Verse 4. Have faith in God. Do all else fail about you. Have faith in God. He provides for his own. He cannot fail, though all kingdoms shall perish. He rules the reigns upon his throne. Have faith in God, he is on his throne. Have faith in God, he watches over his own. He cannot fail. He must prevail. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Amen. Thank you for joining. That is the essence of the message. If we, if we want to be accompanied by Jesus so that we will not be comfortless, we need to have the faith of God. We need to have faith in God. Amen. The passage we read this morning, um, Psalm 119 from verse 1 to 12, it started by saying, Blessed are the undefiled in the way. When I heard that uh, a few days ago when I was uh, preparing for this message, I said, hey, so one of the reasons why we can be comfortless is by being defiled on the way. Which way? Can somebody tell us which way the Lord is talking about there? The ways of the Lord, the way of discipleship, the way of prayer, the way of faith, the way of courage, the, faith, the, the way of not giving up in the Christian race. We all face different kinds of diverse of temptations. And the Lord Jesus has told us, Say, in the world, you shall have what? He didn't even say it is trouble. You know, tribulations is bigger than troubles. When he said tribulations, it is encompassing. Whatever you see all along your way as a Christian, listen to what Jesus has said. Have faith in what he said. You will have it. But he said, be of courage because I have what? If Jesus is in us, we will remember. But most of the packages of to-dos that we have. You know what I mean by packages of to-dos? We go and occupy this, the, the, the place where Jesus is resident. Because they, they are, those, those, those packages of to-do, they are like a being in us. And they displace the reserved temple of the living God in us. And we run after them instead of being accompanied by God inside us. We replace the packages of to-dos, the, 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 the packages of troubles, temptations, worries, depression, all kinds of things. We replace, we put it in the, in the place of God. 
And then, he that says, I will come to you, we have pushed him aside and we replace them with the packages of to do. Therefore, comfortlessness results. There is no, there is no shortcut about it. It happens to all of us. When we do it, we face it. Amen. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me uh, mention this. The social media has been our trouble. It's one of the packages. Many things we listen to, many things we read on the social media. The, most of the contents of the social media are weapons of the devil to keep our hearts engaged in the war system uh, uh, activities. I must, I, must, I must talk to my friend on Facebook. I must do this. Um, I want to consider those, those uh, what, what do they call that thing? Um, those film things. What's the name of the, 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 where you watch your films on the, on the, on the TV? Netflix. Ne Netflix. <laughs> yes. As a Christian, if Netflix is your friend, Jesus can be your friend always. I'm, I'm, I'm sure about that. If you are a friend of ne Netflix in this, in this state, in the, in where the world is today, you, you are already exposing yourself to weaponization of the world and the devil. Do you know that most of the things we, 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 we see on the social media, most of the things many people do on the social media, they are weapons to tear the hearts of Christians who are not aware of the weaponization of the content that you look at. They are weapons. Ask me how I know. Ha. Those times when those, uh, those things are happening in Nigeria, uh, they have been arrested the Boho, they have arrested this, they have arrested that, and I read them. What happened to Nehemiah in captivity? Most of the time happens to all of us, but they are negative things. What concerns me if they arrest somebody that is fighting for am I can I deliver him? But it enters my heart, and because of my love for Nigeria, I will, and there is the, the best I can do is allow Jesus and me to pray about it. But most of most of the time, what do we do? We meditate on it. We occupy our mind with it unnecessarily. I just give that as an example. That's happened to me. And many, I know many of us have passed through that gate of allowing the weapons of what we hear to dominate our hearts instead of, I mean, displacing the space that is reserved for God. And if you are not careful, it will rule in your heart throughout the day. The next day, it starts again and rule your heart to the point of forgetting to pray. To the, to the point of forgetting to realize that the Holy Spirit is there. To the point of realizing the fact that even though you occupy yourself with it, there is nothing you can do about it except you pray. And the prayer that you are supposed to pray, the Holy Spirit is not there to quicken you, to help your infirmity to pray. So, comfortlessness does what? Results. One of the medical doctors, when I was still a lecturer in the Polytechnic, when I went to, when, most of us who went for him uh, for medical um, treatment, medical checkup, and said, he told me, said, he has discovered that majority of, well, not really lecturer, but he was talking about lecturer. He said, majority of us who are lecturers, we are, we are complaining of uh, blood pressure on the, on the rise. And he said, well, not only you, but everybody, all parents that have been coming, who have children, who have wives, they have been having issues with blood pressure, and it's increasing by day. And he said, I want to tell you some of the reasons. And he started talk, talking to me. He left the medical thing and was, because we are friends. He's actually, he's also a family doctor for, for my family. He said, engineer, let me tell you that you need to go and slow down. Even in the home, when you say, eh, bele, eh, krombe, it's part of it. All those little, little, <laughs> bra, I mean, uh, worry, I mean, shouts, just hard talk. Yes. 
is part of you are you are you are you are engaging you are engaging uh, uh, excessive activity of the body system and the, the body system is so faithful is going to recognize it very quickly and store it as part of things to to work on and as it works on it you are, the, the, the body system is out of balance and he said most of you lecturers you know the you know your students these days they are very unruly and you worry about it it's like what does somebody think weaponization of what happens around us they are weapons all those things that happen around us in the home in the life of children in a place of work they are weapons weapons to rob us of comfort weapons to rob us of a of a, of a heart that is established on god that is resting on god that allows the holy spirit to take control shouting at children or colleagues at work Speaking truth, even in a, speaking even truth in annoyance. Even when we are speaking the truth and we are annoyed, the body recognizes it as sources of storage of symptoms of stress, symptoms of trouble. So let's look at that. It's one of the ways the devil works uh, to to tune or, or make, the, to increase the level of our stress. The devil, the enemy is always looking for people to cut, to be caught off guard, to steal their joy. So anytime we are caught off guard with some of these things or many other things, we know them. Steals our joy. And what is the difference between joy and comfort? They are related. When, when, when joy is stolen, comfort is lost. Okay, so... And uh, when we are comfortless, we grieve the Holy Spirit because it has to step aside. We can spread the truth without losing our testimonies in the process. We can live with our convictions without fuming. We can ex exercise righteous wrath when needed. But we should never lose control of our tempers or tongues. Those are When we do all that, when we don't take care of others, we, we allow the weapons that we have talked about to, to have toll upon our lives. Proverbs 29, 11 says, fools give vent to their rage. They allow their, their rage to come out, to be in action. But the wise bring calm in the end. The wisdom of God, if some, please read it in your Bible. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11, let's read it again. There's somebody who has a mic. Help us to read it. The fool drinks all his spirit, but a wise man holds them back. Please read it again, sir. A fool drinks all his spirit. Yes. But a wise man holds them back. My sister, on your mic. Yes, sir. Please. I want you to be on the. Proverbs 29 11. Yes. I read. A short-sighted fool always loses his temper ah. and display his anger. Uh -huh. But a wise man uses self-control and Thank holds you. it back. Thank you very much. These are for us, even though we are Christians. We need it. The falling nature of man makes man see things falling. Because of our falling nature, especially even as Christians, those falling nature, our falling nature can be woken up anytime. Anytime we do not allow the spirit that, that, that occupies the temple of God in us, we will respond to the falling, falling nature. We respond to the, to the Lord Jesus in us and the Holy Spirit in us when we, when we rest on God, when, we, when our faith in, in God is alive and is, is active. We can deactivate the faith of God in us. We can deactivate the functions and powers and presence of the Holy Spirit by allowing many of those things we have mentioned to occupy the place where the Holy Spirit is supposed to. We give space to the way we want to give space to at that time. And then 
the funny nature is, is woken up. The funny nature is enabled. And the Holy Spirit is disabled. We all, we all pass through it. In a day when the Lord helps you to follow, he said, I will, the, the passage we read, one of the verses said, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will understand your status and follow them. When the status of God are put in the second place and our own order of things, the, the funny nature order of what we want to do takes preeminence, then everything will be done under the influence of the fallen nature. Don't forget that fallen nature can be woken up by you. The next person that is doing anything to you, whatever he's doing, is not responsible for you to tune to the fallen nature. You are the one who decides to choose. We will get there. We decide to choose either to allow the Holy Spirit or allow the fallen nature to be in control in us. As, as you are seated, as each of us are seated, as you are seated, I'm here. If anybody speaks anything to me now, I would decide to, to, to process it and decide to act on it by myself. When somebody says something that is annoying, the person that hears it has the whole authority over his own body to either to react or to act. We have, we have said that about, on this altar. There are the difference between acting and reacting. If somebody says something that is, that is insulting, annoying, or displays any kind of thing that, that makes you feel uncomfortable, you can react when you are you can react when you engage the fallen nature. You can act by the by the power of the Holy Spirit just to neglect it and allow your spirit not to process it. Or you can walk away. Eh? The principle of walk away works, especially if we are, if we have the Holy Spirit. Jesus did it when they were hand, they were pushing him here and there. The Bible said. And he walked away from their midst. Even the Lord Jesus. Why did he say, don't you know I am a child of God? Why are you doing that to me? That's the funny nature. Yes. Jesus walked away. The Bible said, and he walked away in their midst. And you know, they, are, they look very, very, they look, they resemble, Jews, many times, they resemble one another very much. And their dress is similar. So you can afford, that is the kind of, that is the kind, of, the kind of nature God has given us when we are in the Holy Spirit. You can walk away. Just walk away. If the Holy Spirit is to walk away, walk away. But if the fallen nature gives you alternatives, if you want to fall, if you want to lose your comfort, stay there and, and react. React to as a fallen nature person, even though you are a Christian. Does anybody hear me? Uh, you either choose to act or to react. Amen. Amen. But when we choose to react, it is contrary to the nature of God given us in Christ Jesus by virtue of the indwelling Christ and the Holy Spirit in us. Anytime we choose to react, we are not walking in the line of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So let's be careful to avoid what we need to avoid as the Holy Spirit leads and guides us. Amen. Amen. Dear brethren, the Spirit of God may be grieved and vexed and even resisted. We said it last week. Hebrews 10, 29. If, sister, if you have it, you can help us read it again. What are those evils which grieve the Spirit of God in us? As children of God. Yes. Hebrew 10, 29, I yeah. read. Yes. How much greater punishment okay. do you think he will deserve 
-hmm. who has rejected and trampled underfoot mm -hmm. the Son of God. Okay. And has considered unclean and and common the blood of the covenant Amen. that sanctified him. Mm -hmm. And has insulted the spirit of grace who imparted the unmerited favor and okay. blessing of God. Okay. We explain it that, but I want to relate it to what we have said. How much, how, how, how great a sort of punishment will be to that person who is cancelled by the Holy Spirit to act and not react? If the Holy Spirit cancels us to act and we choose to do what? To react. That's what the Bible is saying. Then we face sort of punishment because we have offended in two instances. We are offended in not listening to the Holy Spirit. We are also offended by reacting and giving fuel to the issue on ground. An extension of what we said last week. What are those evils which grieve the Holy Spirit that we engage in day by day? Amen. Amen. A lack of sensitiveness. Like we said. Choosing to react instead of acting is, 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 is a mark of insensitiveness, insensitiveness to the Holy Spirit that we carry. As long as we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Lord has given us a seal to cover us, the Holy Spirit. But when the fallen nature does his work, Lack of sensitiveness or that, that unfeeling condition which arises by disobeying the Spirit's influences. That world where, where we are now. Lack of being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And we, we unfeel Him. We, unfeel, we, we don't feel His influence in us. And therefore, we react. And it is a way of disobeying this uh, Holy Spirit influence. We need to delicately, divinely be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and His abiding presence in us, so that we can keep being, we can keep having Jesus who promised not to leave us comfortless with us, within us. Number two, another grieving fault is lack of truthfulness. If I have the Holy Spirit. I will speak the truth because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. If He's the one enabling me to speak, I'm going to talk. I'm going to. We are going to look at how we speak. What happens? What happens? How we speak? When we speak? When? When uh, Brother Shegun is blowing the trumpet, I want to give an example of that. If he, if he presses the wrong button, what will happen to the, to the sound of the trumpet? Brother Ashegu, if you press the wrong button, you want to, you want to uh, play the, the trumpet and you are, you are pressing wrong buttons, what will happen? What, what? You will get wrong sound. So when you get wrong sound, what do you do? Uh -huh. That's it. It's a very simple example. When the Holy Spirit sensitizes us, enable us and we are reacting it is it is our own it is in our own power to stop reacting and act when you are on the keyboard and you are just pressing any button everybody will look at say does he know how to play the thing you yourself you are supposed to hear you and say ah look i'm not doing the right thing i'm not pressing the right button that is that is a very good analogy we we see we we will see clearly that what we are doing is contrary to what the, because the the the, the 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 things that are happening what what you are hearing what you are seeing is contrary to what the Holy Spirit wants want us to do, so we need to we need to act, and then control it, and then he says, you can greatly grieve the Holy Spirit by a general scantiness of grace. We talked a lot about grace uh, last week. If, let's go back to the sound thing. If the person that is playing the wrong tune does not 
does, does not sense it, and other people are sensing it, what happens? See, uh, brother, um, let's leave the, let, let, let leave your granny look. <laughs> uh, we may not need the music from the organ. Let's, let's just sing. Uh, we, we are, we, you are fine. You are fine. <laughs> eh? It happens. Uh -huh. The extent of kindness of grace is the extent of failure to fulfill the purpose of God. That person has failed to play the, the thing correctly. Let him stop it. That's what the church is all about. When you are doing something that is wrong and people say, Brother, this thing is, is untoward, it's is, uh, is, is, is offending God. It's not, not only offend, if it is offending, if it is offending us correctly uh, in truth, it is offending God. Number three, another evil which drives away the divine spirit, or, 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 I mean the Holy Spirit and, and our comfort is the spirit of pride. The spirit of pride I already mentioned it. If Jesus will allow pride in him, he will not run away when the time of his sacrifice has not come. You know that one day he will be sacrificed, but the sacrifice is also be done in front of the temple by stoning him or by just horrifying him. So he walked away. He acted appropriately. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit is also vexed by laziness. Huh? Proverbs chapter. Chapter 30, verse 25. Please read it, our sister. Proverbs 30, verse 25. Let's see what happens with laziness when we are not supposed to be lazy. I overslept this morning. I was supposed to get up, but my body was, was, was telling me not to get up. I said, ah, today is Sunday. I look at the clock. I said, ah. So when I woke up, I said, ah, no. This sleep, you have to stop now. I need to go. I need to go. I was telling that Timothy, I said, I almost overslept too. It happens. The nature. So, sister. Proverbs 30, 25. Yes. The ants are not a strong people. Did you hear that? The ants. God is saying they are what? They are people. I will go to it. Yes. The ants are not a strong people, yet mm. they prepare their food in the summer. In the right time. In summer, everything is blossoming. And they can pick and choose. And not. In the dry season, what will they find? Even uh, ants. So, the Bible called them people. Why did he say so? Because you are, we are supposed to learn from them. And make hay while the sun shines. If, uh, when I saw I said, hey. So God, that's what you call them. He said, because you can learn from them. If human beings have to learn from ants, you see the depravity level we have gone into? We, we, we go into depravity when we refuse to learn directly from God. God will use his own nature, some other nature, who are very responsible to God. Ants. The Bible says they prepare their food and so on because they know they also have a, a, a sensing of the seasons. May the Holy Spirit help us to sense, to sense seasons in our lifetime, in our day-to-day -day activity. May we be able to sense seasons and act, not react. Sensing seasons. Number five is neglect of prayer. The Bible says, Jesus said, When ye pray, enter into your closet and talk to, to your Heavenly Father in secret. Well, we can pray in the church, we can pray on, online, we can pray in the church, but your own life, your own life prayer is what we are talking about now. Because nobody knows what happens in your, in your house, in your home, in your bedroom, maybe in your car when you are driving, when you are at work. We don't want to ask whether you pray at work or pray anytime you want, but it is a requirement to maintain the presence of Jesus who has promised not to leave us comfortless. The Lord grant us understanding in Jesus' name. In Matthew 6, chapter 6, we don't have to read it. He said, Jesus said, Your heavenly Father, who sees you in secret, will answer you publicly. 
a, a, a responsible being or human being who has a parent, when you want to talk to your father, you don't discuss important things in the open space, in the presence of everybody, and you start making big, big requests. Responsibly, you are supposed to find a time, a special time to talk to your father, if actually he is your father. If we, if we find time to regard our father to talk to them uh, the correct way, we need to do that in prayer also. Amen. Amen. Let me read this. I may not be able to read all because my time is, is gone. Um, only give not your heart to all words that are spoken. Do not take them to heart or let them weigh you down. Do not notice them or act as if you had them. Negative words. You cannot stop people's tongues. Are you listening? People are free to use their tongue to say something, whatever they want to say. Now, let me continue. Uh, you cannot stop people's tongue, and therefore, the best thing is to stop your own ears and never mind what is spoken, even including the social media, including Netflix. You know what you hear there now? Okay. Let me stop there so that it is part of generous... It is, it is part of the generals to treat passionate words as if they have never been spoken. There was a day a man of God came to preach to us in a church when I was in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. After I preached, and I was so fascinated by him. And I said, I went to him and I said, Brother, thank God for you. I've heard about you. That, that's a great man of God. You, you, you know what he told me? He said, Don't believe it. Ha! Huh? He said, Brother, don't believe what anybody told, tells you. Believe what the Holy Spirit says. Ha! Huh? So when people are giving you compliments, tell them. Tell them that all compliments is from Jesus. Otherwise, your head gets swollen and you, you, you spirit, the spirit will talk about coming and every other thing follows. Don't believe. Um, let me stop there. There is a man called uh, Tacitus who described a wise man as saying, to one that railed him, railed at him, if anybody is railing at you. You are the lord of your tongue. You will tell the person that is speaking wrongly. You are the lord of your tongue, but I'm also the master of my ears. We need, the Holy Spirit has given us the grace to master our ears, even when we have had it. The master of my ears. You may say what you please, but I will only hear what I choose. Are you listening to me? We cannot shut our ears as we do our eyes. I will go to that very quickly before, I, before we pray. For we have no ear leads. You know, God did not put ear leads here because he has given you the authority to control it, to put a lead there from your inner being, from your heart. You can put a lead to your ears. What, what comes in there? Internally. <laughs> Amen. Right? Okay. Then he said, we cannot shut our ears, for we have no ears. And yet, as we read him, as we read of him, stop his ear from hearing blood, hearing something that is hearing doubt, and all that, and all that. Uh, we will say of the general gossip of the village and of the unarranged words of our angry friend, do not hear them. And if you must hear them, do not lay them to heart. For you also, for you also have talked idly and angrily in your day. Sometimes when we talk angrily to people and they have had it and so on and so forth. And he says, you don't even know if you are called to account for every word that you have spoken, even about our direct friends. Sometimes we, we let loose our speech and we are, we are going astray. Solomon are good as he as, as in, in, is there. For oftentimes also, your own heart knows that you yourself, like Christ, have caused others. So when somebody is speaking something like a curse, even when even if it does not happen when you are when you are a Christian, maybe it has happened when you are not Christ, when you are, when you are not yet, yet uh, converted as a Christian. This our mouth has spoken so many things before, spoken so many things before, which the Lord which the Lord uh, uh, might have cleansed with the blood of Jesus. Yes. So I I I, I look at what happens when we speak. The use of the tongue. 
You know what the, the Bible says about the tongue? It says it's a very dangerous weapon. The tongue is a very dangerous weapon. And I looked at it and said, oh, so how does the tongue, the, what, uh, what made the tongue to speak? Speech. There is something they call umo, umo something, something, nothing, medical something. But that's not what, where I'm going now. It says there is voluntary speech that is generated by the tongue, and there is the involuntary speech. Only the voluntary speech is what the Holy Spirit can control. When you go to the realm of the involuntary, you are outside of the spirit of grace. And everything you do there is the work of the fallen nature. And the Holy Spirit will keep quiet. You do, do you understand me? The voluntary speech, that which you choose within yourself to say. And the Holy Spirit can easily influence that. But when you are outside the, the realm of the spirit of grace, everything begins involuntarily. And even when the Holy Spirit is with his still small voice saying something, the involuntary powerful nature inside the man that is now, they refer to that state, when they, when they say a beast has, has woken up in them. When a beast has opened up inside somebody, inside somebody, he begins to speak involuntarily. And the control of the Holy Spirit is only by divine, divine intervention. Not the normal Holy Spirit still small voice that we, that we normally enjoy. May the Lord grant us understanding to walk uprightly with him and allow his Holy Spirit to help us to maintain having him inside us to keep us comfortless. Right? To keep us, not, not, not to make us comfortless. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. My prayer is that the Lord will help us to understand all those little, little things and that, make us, that make us lose our comfort. And the Holy Spirit will help us to be sensitive, help us to speak the truth, help us to be prayerful, help us to learn to, 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 to control what we hear and process it correctly with the help of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this morning. We pray that as you have spoken to us, all of us, we take heed to your instructions and we follow your guidance in every situation that we will not, we will not follow the dictates of the fallen nature, but we will follow the divine guidance of your spirit divine inside our lives. Because as you promise not to leave us comfortless, we want to continue to enjoy your presence in us so that we will not lose the comfort that you have provided for us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.